What's up everybody? It's me Troy. That's T R O I. I'm trying to give y'all some ASL there, but this shit, it just wasn't working. But this is Troy and I'm here for hashtag read so lit. Now read so lit was organized by Frenchy D. If you do not know who Frenchy D is, I have her description or her links down below. And let me tell you, if you have to hit that link, God bless you because you should know who the mother of booktube is by now. I'm telling you. So first, I just want to go ahead and say thanks, Frenchy D, for um, organizing this, and also thanks for asking me. Asking me, did I want to contribute to Read So Lit? So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So when Frenchy D asked me what exactly I wanted to do my video on, immediately the idea came into mind, and that is Sisters in Crime, and what that means is Black women writing Black women in crime fiction. Now, for those who are familiar with my channel, they know that I love crime fiction and mysteries. I read those mostly. That is sort of uh, my go-to to go to, and you know. But I read a variety of other things in between that. And the reason I'm just so passionate about this genre is it has a lot to do with the fact that I love this genre in specific when it relates to how a, a woman is able to sort of play into a, what is considered sometimes a man's world and she's able to use her cleverness, her, her own inner strength, so to speak, to bring peace out of chaos. Um, she's involved with the puzzles, she's involved with the crimes. It's just her energy inside of these books that I really, really love. So naturally, having such a strong passion for this genre i wanted to write in this genre also but the thing about writing in this genre is that while i'm so much familiar with these the protagonists of women in this genre it was very difficult at one time for me to find women of color or black women in particular who were doing the exact same things as say like the the uh caucasian woman who was fighting crime and solving mysteries and you know putting these puzzles together and seeking justice and so, you know, it's only natural that me as a black person that I wanted to write a protagonist that was black. If should I give, be given the chance to actually take the time to write this character. I think it boils down to the fact that that is what I'm most familiar with. That is the sort of vehicle that I wanted to use to tell the kind of stories that I wanted to tell. And the reason I'm so familiar with that is because, like, my life, you know, was a lot of black women in it. You know, my grandmother, she had four girls. Uh, there's my mother and my three aunts and you know, these were strong women. These were women who you know fed me Who taught me how to stand up for myself taught me how to talk smart? <laughs> I guess you could say um, And just generally took care of me, you know They were single mothers. They worked very hard You know, sometimes I want to be mad at my mom about some stuff But the fact of the matter is this that she busted her ass to take care of me and my sister so you know who uh, what other want what other protagonist would I want to write inside of my own work so naturally I'm just drawn to this type of character but of course I couldn't really find her in literature I would find her always um, in sort of the secondary uh, source which is a black exploitation films now I love black exploitation films I know every as you can see we got them all here but um, I think from an, an iconic standpoint that was the total manifestation of the type of woman that I was looking for in literature also. So you had actresses like Pam Greer and Tamara Dobson and Teresa Graves, you know, they were just serving it up on film, you know, getting them, you know, fighting the man, shooting their guns, solving the crimes, bringing justice to their communities. And just as well as people can criticize these films, they were also feature and focus on issues going on in the black community, but don't nobody, they just want to think about the exploitation part. And regardless of even that, I think that a lot of people do not sort of recognize that the black women or black exploitation films were the first female action stars. So Pam Greer as Coffee and Foxy Brown and Sheba and Friday Foster was doing it way before Miss Linda Hamilton and way before Sigourney Weaver and, you know, Miss Tomb Raider as Angelina Jolie. Just a side note, if you want to know more information about these type of women, then you can always get this book by Yvonne Sims. It's Women of Black Exploitation. I highly recommend this book. This book is going to open your eyes as it regards to what was really going on in this genre and how people sort of swept it under the rug and just decided it was just cheesy you know, whatever, whatever sort of criticisms that they have. I don't care for all that. I think that at the end of the day, these manifestations of black women are just so powerful and resourceful and they were just very icon iconic that there's no way that I could sit here and say that they have not moved me in some form of fashion. This book right here is sort of like the Bible to the type of protagonist that not only that I want to write, but the protagonist that is, that, you know, that 
that I have such a passion for these strong black women so this is very highly recommended so as I was saying I was seeing these voices in black exploitation films um, but as someone who wanted to write like I mentioned I was not finding them in literature I was not finding them in books I needed to hear these voices because these are the voices that I needed to be sort of my examples you know these are the voices that I need to be sort of like my inspiration the voices that I needed to have you know let me know that hey this is possible that you know there is a such thing as a a African American woman fighting crime just as well as a Caucasian woman in this in this particular genre but the problem was that I just could not find them I couldn't find them at all and then what ended up happening like a long time ago there was a storm that came through um, our city it completely wiped out the power for like a week uh, me and my cousins we decided we were gonna go get some books and we we're just gonna go to the park and read you know while the Sun is shining so I was at my aunt's house and I was searching through her entertainment center and at the bottom of the pile I eventually came across a book with a very Afrocentric sort of um, cover and it really caught my eye and here I am thinking oh, okay this is looks interesting I might pick this book to take with me and I'm looking on the back and there is a synopsis that gave me everything that I was seeking for it was a book written by Valerie Wilson Wesley and it was featuring her black private eye detective and single mother and business owner Tamara Hale. She's like, wow, so these books exist. They exist. There were black women who were writing black female characters in crime fiction. So I was just like, you know what, great. This is it. This is it. This is possible. And with that discovery, that eventually branched off and led me to discovering other different authors like Eleanor Taylor Bland, Nora DeLoach, just a variety of other um, black female writers who were writing crime fiction, who were writing protagonists who were strong, protagonists who were empowered, protagonists who were resourceful. They were women who were in position of power, women who were in position, who were authoritative figures, women who were cops, women who were lawyers, women who were even grandmothers, women who were lesbians solving crimes. It was just a variety of them that just sort of funneled out from that point forward over the years. So it's just like, damn, these people exist. The thing that I want to write about the most was real. It was very, very much real. Here were the examples. Here were the voices that I wanted to hear that no one was speaking about. Now, I have a variety of theories as to why no one really talks about this genre or this niche in this genre. And it really relates back to the fact that they are using black protagonists to tell these stories. And I think it's kind of valid of me to point out that theory because there's actually another ethnic author who writes in crime fiction. And when she suggested to her publishers that she wanted to use an ethnic uh, lead in one of her series, they shot her down. Why? Because statistics show that an ethnic character in crime fiction does not make money. That is that that's what she said, and, and I believe that 100%. Because a lot of these authors of uh, black women writing crime fiction, their series are either cut short or they're just like I said, they're so obscure that no one ever even talks about them to begin with. But they exist. I have finally found that stream. Of that of niche that I really 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 was very passionate about and um, it was just great from that point forward knowing that these authors existed and that they were doing exactly what the what the look the, the other girls was doing they was handling the crimes too so I know when people think you know crime fiction or mystery they're like you know who it's it's genre fiction you know you know these authors these black women who write in this particular genre they're not capable I'm speaking in quotes here they're probably not seen as being capable of coming on par with you know their contemporary uh, counterparts now the thing about that is that I like to say that while I think that the divide is true it comes mostly from a technical aspect because you wouldn't write a crime fiction novel the same way you would write a contemporary fiction novel with contemporary fiction you have a lot more room for uh, poetry and prose in the syntax but with a crime uh, novel you have to it has it's, it takes like a it's like the neurosurgery of fiction it, it takes sleight of hand it takes precision it takes uh, careful plotting in order for that to come about now while that divide is very much true I think that what you will find is that although that exists the women these women they do also address the same thing that their contemporary counterparts address and that would be subjects related to uh, race 
definitely race really um, despite what anybody think definitely race um, you have to remember that these are women in power and there are people in these books that do not appreciate that um, so it, they address race they address um, abuse they address mental illness a lot um, they address sexuality they address uh, social class so they're talking about the same things it's only the only difference really besides the technical aspect of the writing is that it's done under the sort of duress of murder and they have to seek the justice and you know recreate peace underneath that chaos that's the only difference that really I think that comes between them you know but um, I don't think anyone is any such less than the other I think the the main thing to focus on is the fact that these are people of color who are given a voice and some of their voices are not heard